<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting, titillating, orgasmic edition of Radical Rockin' Record Reviews. And I'm your host, as always, Wild Ride bassist Mick Watkins, otherwise known as Dick Twatkins. And today, guys, I'm going to talk to you about the new album, the seventh album overall from Swedish glam metal masters crazy licks and their latest release street lethal okay if you never heard of crazy licks if you're not uh if you know if you've never been exposed to crazy licks well i'm getting ready to expose it all to you right now crazy licks is an excellent band okay let's say if you're in the kind of you know 1987 through Maybe 1991, 1992, glam metal, melodic, LA, hard rock. I'm not gonna go with any of that hair metal shit. Fuck the hair metal term. It's a derogatory remark towards badass killer bands. You know, the hair metal term was probably created by some fucking dipshit pencil neck geeks over at Rolling Stone or MTV to kind of cut down the 80s and early 90s rock scene. That's all I gotta say is right here, right there. But anyway, Crazy Licks is a badass band. They've been around for a while now. I'd say a good 15 years. They do really good uh, deals over in Europe. Crazy Licks needs to break over here in the States. I know they've done some touring in the States. I've not yet been able to see them, but I would really like to because they are a killer, newer, badass band. Okay, let's go into a little discography breaking. Briefing. Let's go into a little discography briefing first on Crazy Licks. Crazy Licks debut album entitled Loud Minority. Okay, came out in 2007. Now, I gotta admit, it's the only studio album of Crazy Licks that I do not own. I don't have Loud Minority. I need to get that. I need to put that on my list. I need to put it on my little checklist of shit I need to pick up soon. But I do have their follow-up album, album number two in Crazy Licks discography. And overall, in my opinion, one of their best. From 2010, we got their album, New Religion. Good shit, man. From this album, this is all you need to hear. If you hear this song and you love it, and you wanna crank it up, then you're gonna dig Crazy Licks. Check out the song, Rock in a Hard Place. Excellent stuff. So yeah, this is the second album from 2010, okay? 20, uh, 2012 brought on their third album. And this is whenever I jumped on the Crazy Licks train. It was back in uh, 2012, 2013 with their overall third release. Get rid of that glare. Riot Avenue. Another killer, really good release. On this album, I would suggest you check out the song Downtown. I really, really dig Downtown. Downtown's badass. I think it's about banging some sisters or something. Pretty cool stuff. Anyway, check out Riot Avenue from 2012 on Frontiers Records. By the way, Crazy Licks are signed to the excellent Frontiers Records. One of the greatest hard rock, heavy metal record labels going on in this day and age. So then, flash forward to 2014, and Crazy Licks released the self-titled album, Crazy Licks. Very good album. Pretty cool album. Um, if I would suggest a song to check out from this record, I would say, Heroes, Heroes Are Forever. Heroes Are Forever. Excellent track. Hell Raising Women's Badass. Uh, Girls of the 80s is pretty cool. Psycho City. Definitely some cool shit on this one. 2014's self-titled album, Crazy Licks, okay? And then brought in a kind of a new era for the boys in Crazy Licks. So this was in 2017, and I do know that, I believe this is whenever Crazy Licks started to kind of gain a little traction over here in the USA. Was, if you remember about 2016, 2017, uh, there was a Friday the 13th video game released, you know? And I'm not really much of a video game guy, or I'm not a video game guy, so I never played it. Even though Friday the 13th is my favorite horror movie franchise, 
I love Jason Voorhees. He's one of my favorite fictional characters of all time. But anyway, Crazy Licks uh, recorded and released the theme song to that video game called Trip X Triple I. And X Triple I, if you don't know, is Roman numerals for the number 13. Pretty ingenious, I must say, for lead singer Danny Rexon and the boys. So I believe with this album, they started to kind of do something to where each album, starting with this and the next few afterwards, they all kind of had a theme to them, which I really, really dig being a fan of movies and cinema and hard rock and metal music. But yeah, each album had a theme in the artwork and lyrical aspects, the album cover, the graphic arts and the record. And well, started with this in 2017, Crazy Licks, Rough Justice, and you know, you can see it's got the kind of the cool 80s horror movie kind of fonts, kind of a little spooky, kind of kind of nocturnal look to it, kind of 80s looking. But anyway, yeah, so it started with this. So uh, the theme of this record is like kind of 80s horror, 80s slasher. Pretty fucking cool. I dig that aspect. If I had to suggest any cool tracks from this, X Triple I. X Triple I. Friday Nights. Good song. X Triple I is really cool. Uh, Wild Child's pretty cool. Not a Wasp cover, by the way. Walk the Wire. Killer. Gotta have a song on Killer, right? Yeah, very good album for 2017. Awesome. Then, uh, flash forward to 2019. And so far in the Crazy Licks discography, I will say that I believe this is my favorite Crazy Licks album right here. I'm going to go with from 2019. This is the Top Gun album, okay? They went from 80s horror to kind of Top Gun, Tom Cruise kind of stuff in this album. And this album is called Forever Wild from 2017, or 2019, excuse me. Man, this album's fucking good. This album, when it came out, it knocked my dick in the dirt. Wicked Breakout. Terminal Velocity. Oh, man. From this album, check out the song, It's You, which, man, if that song would have came out in 1988, 1989, that shit would have blew up all over MTV. It would have been a huge hit, I think. It's You is such a great song. And Terminal Velocity is also an excellent song. So that brings you up to speed on Crazy Licks. It's their last album for a while. Probably my favorite Crazy Licks album. So that brings us to their current I think it's been out for two or three months now. Just now um, getting around to a review on it. 2021's uh, Street Lethal. All right. Now, if you couldn't tell by looking at this, it's kind of got like an old school kind of 70s, 80s kind of kung fu martial arts movie kind of vibe. And this is totally inspired by the amazing, badass, killer Netflix series, Cobra Kai. All right. Growing up, you know, I was a fan of the Karate Kid, I'm sure, as all kids of the 70s and 80s were, you know, if you were born in the 70s and 80s. So if you're like a Gen Xer or an older millennial, Zennial, uh, yeah, you grew up loving the Karate Kid movies. And uh, I liked the first Karate Kid movie pretty well, but dude, the Netflix Cobra Kai series, Cobra Kai, is the best fucking thing in the Karate Kid universe. And this is Crazy Licks kind of doing their soundtrack interpretation for Cobra Kai. And man, it results in a killer, awesome, nut-stomping, nipple-twisting, eyeball-gouging, rocking album. Really fucking good. Really fucking good. You got 11 tracks produced by lead singer, kind of Crazy Licks mastermind, Danny Rexon. Let's open up the booklet so we can... I mean, these dudes are from Sweden, so they all have kind of really weird names that I can never really remember. All right, so yeah. So on lead vocals, you got Danny Rexon. Uh, lead and rhythm guitar, Jans Landergen. Excuse me, I'm trying to say it the best I can. Jans Landergen. Okay, you got that. Uh, man, over in Sweden, they must love the name Jans. I think that's how you say it, or Jeans, or... I think it's Jans. But anyway, on bass guitar, my boy, Jans Anderson. Jans Anderson. And then you got on drums, Joel Carrera, who is a beast of a man. He's a thick old boy. He can beat the shit 
out of those drums, dude. I'm telling you. He can make those drums, your mom, your girlfriend, and your wife his bitch. All right. And then uh, Chrissy Orson on lead in the rhythm guitar. So check it out. There is Crazy Licks. And well, let's dive into the review for their new album, the seventh album overall from Swedish glam metal masters, Crazy Licks. But, but before we do that, I want to... I want to get into a couple things. Get your ass over to www.wildridebandcamp.com and pick up my band Wild Ride's latest EP, Gasoline Alley. Yes, this is Wild Ride's brand new album. It's been out for about two months. It's doing good. It's getting rave reviews. The music videos are getting lots of views here on YouTube. Check out the music video for Gasoline Alley. Telling you, if you dig Crazy Licks, if you dig Motley Crue, Kiss, Judas Priest, Metallica, Thin Lizzy, all that cool shit, dude, Wild Ride, we're right up your alley, dude. Check it out, check it out. So pick up Wild Rides, new EP, Gasoline Alley. And also, I would like to uh, talk about a podcast that I've been uh, guest hosting on from my buddies, YouTube Sensation. Edwin Canastrasi, my Italian stallion brother from another Italian mother. Check out Edwin Canastrasi and my other rock and roll brother from another mother, Eric Jordan, RMCP. They have, over the past couple months, have started a brand new podcast called the Rock All Over You podcast. I'm going to rock all over you. Oh, oh. But anyway, yeah. Check out Edwin Canastrasi and Eric Jordan RMCP's new podcast called Rock All Over You. I think there's been uh, three episodes so far, and I've guest hosted on uh, two of the episodes. The first um, episode we did, um, we did a review on Dawkins' fourth album, excellent album, Back for the Attack. And then uh, about two weeks ago, almost, two weeks ago already, we did a review of Ozzy Osbourne's No More Tears album. So yeah, get on uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. Wherever you listen to podcasts, whether it be Apple Podcast or whatever the fuck else, get on there and listen to the Rock All Over You podcast with Edwin Canastrasi, Eric Jordan, RMCP, two really good friends of mine, two really cool dudes that I can't wait to party with them in real life. And check it out and pick you up a copy of Wild Ride Gasoline Alley before I kick you in the fucking nutsack. Virtually. All right, anyway. So let's get back to Crazy Licks Street Lethal, okay? As you know, I got my handy-dandy notebook. Got my notes I took for this album. Let's get to it. Okay, uh, Crazy Licks Street Lethal. Track number one. Enter the dojo, okay? Like I said before, this screams, hey, Get ready for Cobra Kai Season 4. Pretty cool intro. Sets the mood, definitely. It's kind of got this. It totally sounds like the soundtrack of a montage. That would be any in any Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris movie, Cobra Kai episode. You know, when they're all training and shit's getting very serious in the dojo. You know? So, enter the dojo. It's pretty cool. Sets the mood perfectly. You know? Track number two, Rise Above. Man, this song kicks in like a fucking, uh, like a damn, uh, like a damn freight train bashing through your brain, okay? Rise Above. Typical upbeat slamming crazy licks. Positive lyrics, cool message, skid row type riffage with Def, Def Leppard esque melody and big gang vocals. Hot ass tapping guitar solo. You take all that, put it together, and it leaves for a rocking ass track. And that's one thing that I will tell you about Crazy Licks is Crazy Licks are the kings. They're like, if I had to kind of combine any bands that make up Crazy Licks, I would say you take Pyromania, the best parts of Hysteria era Def Leppard. You take Detonator era rap, and then mix it in with debut album, a little bit of uh, Slave to the Grind era Skid Row, 
throw in a little Swedish influence. And there you go, that's Crazy Licks. So if you dig all three of those bands, Rat, Def Leppard, Skid Row, you'll dig the fuck out of Crazy Licks. So then it goes into Anthem of America. Fuck yes. Great song, totally rocks with great lyrics. Rock is all you need. Anthem for America talks about how, you know, back in the day, back in the 80s and early 90s, early to mid 90s, you know, um, just America was like, you know, the biggest influencer and the greatest driving force for, you know, for this kind of music, melodic LA style, hard rock, glam metal, and how just all of a sudden kind of overnight because of bullshit like MTV, Kurt Loder and Rolling Stone magazine, this kind of music was not in vogue anymore and wasn't cool. And America kind of dropped the ball and got all trendy with fucking gangster rap, shitty hip hop, and Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. Even though I do like some Backstreet Boys and NSYNC songs. You didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. But it's the truth. I kind of do. But anyway, great anthem. Should be blown up all over U.S. rock radio. But it's fucking not. Because U.S. rock radio was either littered with bro metal, butt metal, a five-finger death punch kind of crap, bad wolves garbage, or fucking playing the same old shit from Led Zeppelin, Tom Petty, Steve Miller Band, and Leonard Skinner. All that's cool, but fuck! Where's the new hard rock? Where's the new heavy metal? Crazy Licks should be blowing up all over the U.S. Should be playing out sold-out theaters, clubs, and all over the fucking Danny Wimmer festivals, like Louder Than Life, Rock on the Range, whatever the fuck, all that crap. So Anthem for America, great song. Great song. The Power. Awesome bass tone in the beginning. Perfect placement for a mid-tempo rocker in the track listing. Kind of reminds me of Judas Priest United. You know, it's that kind of, it's that kind of song. Bridge section is my favorite part. You know, where he says, time and time, you know they try to take it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Very good song. Very kind of uplifting. A lot of Crazy Licks music lyrically and just musically, period, is just very uplifting. It makes you feel good. It makes you want to get some stink finger. It makes you want to tip back a couple little kings. It makes you want to party with your buds on a hot summer night. Playing some rock and roll. So yeah, The Power, another kick-ass killer, catchy-ass song. Okay, Final Fury, track number six. Or no, whoa, 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 whoa. The Power, track number four. That's the last song I just reviewed. Okay, track number five called Reach Out, excuse me. My notes say, uh, pretty good song, pretty good song. But in my opinion, the first kind of dip. Kind of cheesy, a little hokey. In a Bon Jovi kind of way. And if you know me, if you know Dick Twatkins, I'm not a Bon Jovi fan at all. That's the kind of 80s rock that I'm not a fan of. That kind of syrupy, sugary, saccharine-laced Bon Jovi hair metal. Now, that's hair metal. Not horrible, but my least favorite song on the album. But you might like it. It might be your favorite. So still check it out. Track number six, Final Fury. Cool 80s buildup with synth drums and keyboards, synthesizers. Perfect instrumental to start the second half of the record. Very cool. And in the background playing this song, track number seven, probably, maybe, quite possibly, my favorite song on the fucking album, Street Leaf of the title track. Heavy metal banging ass track. Reminds me of Rat, Skid Row, some White Snake, throw a little bit of White Snake era, 1987 era White Snake in there. Even some of the the newer White Snake with Red Beach in it, like the Good to Be Bad, Forevermore, uh, Flesh and Blood era White Snake. Kind of reminds me of that a little bit too. A little modern White Snake. It would be the perfect song on tour. And, then, and one of the things I wrote down too: Why can't Ozzy Osbourne write a fucking song like this nowadays? This would be perfect for Ozzy. I can picture Ozzy having this on a brand new album, like a No Rest for the Wicked, uh, Ultimate Sin style fucking song. 
That's the kind of fucking music we need Ozzy Osbourne doing in 2021. Maybe Danny Rexon should write the next Ozzy Osbourne album. Who knows? Killer labia melting guitar solo. This shit rocks. Yes, I said it. Labia melting. It'll melt your girl's labia on down to nothing, boy. Street lethal crazy licks coming at you. Track number eight. Caught between a caught between the rock and roll, okay? Another favorite song on this album. Probably my second. Yeah, my second favorite track on this record. Uh, awesome chorus. Sounds like it could have been on Motley Crue's Dr. Feelgood album. But better than a lot of the songs on Dr. Feelgood. Better than Slice of Your Pie. Better than Time for Change. Maybe a few others. It would be a great song to hear live and could work very well for audience participation. Track number nine, In the Middle of Nothing. Good tune. 100% guaranteed to flood the basements of all unexpected babes. Full on rock and roll panty soaker. It's true. These words I speak are true. <laughs> Very reminiscent of Twisted Sisters song, You're All That I Need, off of their Love Is For Suckers album. Very close to that. It's a kind of an obscure deep cut if you are uh, aware of that song. Pretty close to that, I'd say. Netflix, this needs to be on Cobra Kai. Perfect for a heartbreak in love montage, you know? You know, like, let's say, you know, because Cobra Kai's got lots of teenage love and teenage drama, you know? Be a perfect song for one of those montages whenever uh, um, Samantha Russo's character, who's always fucking moody and whiny, is sitting there <laughs> staring and crying, you know? It'd be perfect for that. So Netflix, you need a little crazy licks, street lethal in your Cobra Kai action. Don't let us down. Don't deny it. So track number 10, uh, one fire, one goal, okay? Uh, typical 80s inspirational movie montage, Crazy Licks type tune. I mean, it's nailed it perfectly. Uh, really dig this tune. These dudes are the kings of this type of stuff. Like I said, 80s inspirational movie montage. That kind of sums up a lot of Crazy Licks music. Perfect for that vibe, perfect. Crazy Linux, Street Lethal, pick it up. It's a good album. And the final track, track number 11, Thief in the Night. No, it's not a Kiss cover. That's an excellent Kiss song, Thief in the Night, sung by Gene Simmons, even though I'm not that big of a fan of the Crazy Nights album. You know, a lot of Crazy Licks, though, we'll say that, bringing up Kiss and Crazy Nights. A lot of Crazy Licks kind of sounds like a beefier, more ballsy version of Kiss' Crazy Nights era. Just throwing it out there. Throwing it out there. All right. This is the six minute plus epic on the album. Probably, maybe, quite possibly my second or maybe favorite on this favorite song on this album. That's whenever I wrote these notes. I would say it's not my favorite song. Street Lethal is probably my favorite. But you know what? Scratch out Caught Between the Rock and Roll. Thief in the Night is probably my second favorite track with Cop Between the Rock and Roll being my third favorite track. Okay. Got a very cool late night, kind of brooding, sleazy street vibe. Badass song. Can't imagine this being an Ozzy song. Once again, I could hear Ozzy doing this song. Very much kind of in the style of Shot in the Dark, you know, from the Ultimate Sin album. We all know Shot in the Dark, especially my friend Stephanie Akedo Kid. Stephanie Kiddo Kid knows all about some shot in the dark. Shot in the dark. One step away from you. It's just a shot in the dark. Good times, man. That was an epic good time. Uh, killer guitar lead section. Love the classic fade out. You know, the classic fade out where the song doesn't have an ending. It just quietly fades out. Love that aspect. Lots of old 70s Kiss albums did that. Love Danny Rexon's Scream at the Fade. Dude's a hell of a songwriter. Got an excellent voice. Really good front man that wears a Jason mask on XIII. Pretty cool. So my overall thoughts on Crazy Licks, Street Lethal. Awesome album. 
Definitely one of their best, if not best album. Now, looking back, I don't think this is as strong as Forever Wild, but I will say that this is probably my second favorite Crazy Licks album. Love the direction of the band. Love the thematic kind of movie vibe direction the band is going. I think they should continue doing that. Uh, but one thing, one critique I will have to say is I think the productions on all these albums, on almost every one of them, they all kind of sound the same a little bit. They all sound a little bit samey. I'd like to hear something different on the next album. Maybe a little bit more raw. Um, you know, instead of being maybe like Rat Detonator, maybe the next Crazy Licks album should be a little bit more Rat Out of the Cellar, okay? Or maybe a little bit more Rat EP, the self-titled Rat EP from 1983. So yeah, that's a review I have for Crazy Licks Street Lethal. Uh, on the Dick Twatkin scale of rating, I would say, you know, um, this is a good three and a half, four star album, which is a better version of good and fucking awesome. You know, it's a good album, man. It's a good album. So, if, you know, if you haven't heard of Crazy Licks, just look up the song Street Lethal. Crank it up. Like I said, drink, tip you back a couple... Little Kings, Coors Lights, whatever's your poison of choice, and rock out to some Crazy Licks. That's all I got. My review for Crazy Licks, Street Lethal. Guys, I want to thank you all for tuning in to this episode of uh, Radical Rock and Record Reviews. And if you like this video, if you like my past videos, and if you like the channel, don't be bashful, don't be shy. I'm your favorite kind of rock and roll guy. Subscribe to this fucking channel. I'm at like 926 subscribers, 27 subscribers. It's almost been two years since I've started this channel. Started it in April of 2020 during the COVID lockdown pandemic stuff. And uh, I'd like to reach a thousand subscribers by then. So if you could help me out, help me out. And I'll help you out by giving you all kinds of cool fucking recommendations for bands and albums to listen to. And I give you my thoughts and my opinions on those mentioned albums. So guys, thank y'all for tuning in. Check out my band Wild Ride, W-Y-L-D-R-Y-D-E on Facebook, official Wild Ride on Instagram. Check out our new EP, Gasoline Alley. You can pick up a CD copy at wildride.bandcamp.com or you can stream it on YouTube Music, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever is your streaming service choice. And don't forget to check out the Rock All Over You podcast with my buddies Edwin Canastrossi, the Italian rock and roll stallion, and Eric Jordan, RMCP. Swear, he looks like he, he like could be, looks like he's cosplaying Robin Zander. He looks just like fucking Robin Zander. So guys, take it easy, and uh, I'll see you next time. Be good. Tip, tip you back a couple little kings and get you some stink finger. Ah! See you guys. Yeah.